taking a little break from the Apollo Disky project. This is my um, Raspberry Pi powered Apollo Disky and flight control simulator. And today we're gonna play with a new solar charge controller. As you guys know, I have the Make Me Outdoors channel where I do my outdoor stuff. And last year I got myself a camper that uh, I put on our family bush lot. We've got uh, some acreage with some nice private bush and I've been building an off grid camper and this is going to be a cool addition. This is a 60 amp MPPT charge controller to go with my kilowatt of solar panels my father got for me which was a super awesome Christmas gift. Well we need something to charge the batteries off of that solar panel and this one is capable of the high voltage off of my panels in series and to charge my 12 volt batteries. Pretty beefy little sucker to do 60 amps. And these things have a pretty awesome track record. There's the model number. Uh, these things are rebranded under multiple names. Sunny Sky I've seen and a few others. This one is just MPPT. MPPT. There's nothing on the box really other than that is our model info, the 60 amp one. The problem for me is right here. This I want to mount close to my batteries and I won't be able to see my charge indication and I can't find where they're selling the remote for it, but I can sure find where one goes. This is RS-485 uh, and power and ground, actually just ground output. I'm betting this is Modbus. And I think we can probably interface to this and get the data piped out and then maybe use one of the ESP32 displays or an Arduino display, but need to play with it. Just went ahead and hooked it up to my power supply and we're only drawing 100 milliamps and there we go. Look at this. Perfect. We are alive. Uh, voltage mm, agrees. Uh, close enough. Tenth of a volt. And yeah, total kilowatt hours. We're not obviously not putting anything in is that would be our solar panel here. We could simulate that too if we wanted to, but I'm not going to bother. Um, I want to see what's coming out of here. Interesting. I need to play around with this more. Across what I would think would be the bus, I'm getting something, but I don't know what it is. I'm getting these weird bursts and they're very repeatable. They're real. Just seems like it could be just random noise. I hope this thing will talk. We can change the communication settings, I did find. And there is most definitely a baud rate and an address. And I don't know what happens if we change that address to anything else. I guess that could be, could be a Modbus ID maybe? I don't know. Need to play around. This episode brought to you in part by PCBWay. Check them out at the link below for your next electronics project. They offer competitive rates for all PCBs, parts, and assembly, as well as 24-7 tracking of your order from start to finish. Okay, so, well, what we got is just a whole lot of ruckus. Uh, we've got what looks like there's a bus probably there is my expectation but what we don't have is a clear uh, communication of any form we've just got well actually we've got more than we've got st steady state 2.7 volts um, on the a channel and i'm kind of thinking that this is indeed rs-485 but it probably doesn't talk unless asked. And this is just my theory, is that it might be Modbus and the master has to ask this as a slave, hey, give me your data. Um, we can mess around with that. I can set up an Arduino in an RS-485 module and uh, I'm gonna play around with it.
Well, you guys know me. I can't put anything down. Uh, got a little ambitious and set this up. So I think I'm going to try with an RS-485 breakout board, which I have plenty of because I anticipated doing RS-485 projects, just not this one. Uh, we've got an Arduino, Arduino Nano. I just got it into a ZIF socket because I'm playing with these on the boards now and I'm starting to like it because uh, I switch microcontrollers so often. Um, I'm seeing whether this is going to be reliable with the little tiny stubby leg connections into a breadboard. I think it is. Um, and we don't need that power supply. Um, what I need to do is figure out an Arduino sketch for the module and shut off the police. Um, and then uh, I'll figure out what terminals I need on the Arduino Nano and then we'll terminate this to our charge control and we'll see if we can get it to talk. Well, I'm not sure the value of this particular video, but what I did is I hooked up the 485 uh, Max chip breakout that I had. I had to switch to an ESP32 because the sketch I found used this because uh, ESP32 has a second serial readily available without using software serial. So no Arduino Nano. And I fired up a sketch that I found from Modbus for an MPPT charge control. And I can't read from the register and I'm still not sure whether my breakout is working. So I'm gonna have to do some scoping, but uh, hold on a minute here. That spoke and then it failed again. What did I do? Uh, I was just messing around. What I found is I found my VCC was on the wrong pin. That spoke. That is real text. We can talk to this thing. Something cool happened. Okay, this actually could be my code. Uh, when I reboot the ESP32, I can get that set up okay. That... I have to go back through the code and see whether that's coming from the ESP32 or over the bus. Well, nothing but read register error. So what I'm wondering is whether I'm actually at that register in this device. Uh, this was for, this sketch is for a different uh, power control. So hmm, don't know. Uh, it does seem that this should work. Uh, I think what I need to do is figure out whether I can just scan all the registers in Modbus because I know the address because I can set it. It's address one. And I know the baud rate because I can set it. Uh, it looks like about 9600 is as fast as we can do. So this should be possible. Everything I've tried, no dice for this thing. I am on a different board. Uh, I've tried different RS-485 and no Taki. Three different boards and still no dice. I still think this would be Modbus, but I don't know. I can't get it to talk. So the registers I'm using must not be active in here. I tried a, a circuit by Colin Hickey, which is awesome. And all the derivatives of it are where his came from. and. I can't get this thing to talk, so I'm going to put this on hold. Like, at the end of the day, I don't need it to, but um, I'm going to reach out to the retailer of these and see if I can get any information from them. And uh, I'm failing that. I think we should take this thing apart and have a look at it, too. Well, I just finished documenting this, and uh, I think I know why I can't get anything to talk. This is not what I thought. I thought this would be a rebranded something else, and it may be, but the boards are actually all by Sunny Sky, the maker of this thing, right down to this board uh, where our brain is at. And uh, I can't quite make out what kind of microcontroller that is, but uh, everything looks like it might actually be their own and maybe that's why I can't get the EP ever uh, Modbus communication to work which is uh, kind of cool uh, I reached out to them we'll see if they respond back uh, there is TX and RX right here like push comes to shove we could probably extend this out um, we may even you could probably even wireless this like just by 
strictly like it's probably just UART of some form and we could probably just parrot the data right over a wireless connection or, or wired um, either way uh, let's see what they come back with anytime you have something like this apart go ahead and take pictures of everything I took high level pictures real close close pictures and photographed everything that way I don't have to pull the darn thing apart next time when I uh, have a brain wave of oh this is so-and-so chip and I know how to interface that well I can check my pictures <laughs>